Uh, thank you everybody for coming. I'm very excited to be here again and talking. Uh, this is supposed to be a fairly short talk, an introduction to aspect-oriented programming. My name is Noam Weiss. I'm an architect at Checkpoint. Uh, and I wanted to start by uh, saying why, why am I giving this talk uh, in the first place? Um, so I started be because of a previous lecture that was here in, in uh, Core C++ by uh, Kilian. There is a link to the uh, YouTube where he uh, gave a talk about executing around the pointer. Basically, how can we have a function pointer and execute some code around that invocation? And since then, there is another paper on uh, the programming that uh, Inbal shared last time. So thank you, Inbal. This is a very interesting paper. I'm still working through it. It's a, quite a large paper. Uh, but both of those things got me really excited. And I think more so than other people were excited by the, by the talk anyway. And I wanted to share why I think those things are very exciting and why, what they can mean for us as programmers. And I want to start by, by giving a caveat, which is I'm not going to show you a single line of code in this presentation. I'm not going to teach you how to do a single piece of code. Why should you still keep watching me and listening to me and not just switch off to doing something else? Because, and I think we will have a better answer by the end of the talk, but basically programming for me anyway, is not just the tools, but also how you use them how you think about problems, how you organize your thinking. And I think there is a very much to be gained from dressing this new way of thinking and understanding how we can improve our lives and our code. And I hope to be able to share that with you. So I'm going to start by some terminology. And the first thing that I'm going to uh, define is something that is called a concern. There's a Wikipedia definition, which is a set of information that affects uh, the code. Very, uh, very formal, uh, but informally, it's just the technical things that we want to do. And I have some examples here. It ranges from something very specific, like making sure that a button has, is colored red to uh, doing some sort of calculation or arranging a database or even calling your grandmother. Anything that you want your, your program to do is a concern. Uh, it's very close to saying it's a requirement, but uh, if a requirement is we need this program to be ready by next week, that is might be a concern, but not the kind of concern that I'm talking about here right now. Uh, but any consideration, whether it is a uh, requirement from a customer or a design requirement, it's a concern. And basically what we've learned as uh, software engineers over the years is that we generally want to encapsulate a concern in some way. So if we have a, um, a concern about the color of the button, then we'll have some sort of variable that indicates what the color of the, of the button is. If we have a concern about the database, we will want to have some entity that describes the database. So we want to encapsulate things and want to have them really fixed together and have everything in one place organized neatly. And if this sounds a lot like object oriented or general uh, good uh, design practices, you're absolutely right. That's entirely what I just described. In fact, aspect-oriented programming sort of envision itself as an extension of, of, of the conventional object-oriented thinking. So if we have that concern and we have this answer that is object-oriented, what's the problem? What, the, what is the next step that we're trying to achieve when we're going with aspect-oriented programming? And the answer to that is something called cross-cutting concerns. 
cost cutting, cost -cutting concerns are basically concerned that are spread throughout the system in some way. So a typical example would be things like logging and debugging that need to happen all across the system, some sort of accounting maybe that you're doing while the, while the system is running, lock management, uh, security issues, uh, verification, authentication, all the things that you need to do in various places along the code. And typically there are a lot of elements in the system that need to know or to use uh, those elements. And so they're not very well encapsulated. If we're thinking about debugging, for example, I may have a, a class that uh, encapsulate debugging for me. And it does a lot of very important things. It can tell me if I want to output my debugs to the console, to a file, as a syslog, uh, I can have priorities and all the other things that I, that I may require for my debugging system. And I may think I've got the debugging issue very well encapsulated, which is partially true. Partially true, it is very helpful to have one class that handles all of this, but that class still needs to be invoked from many, many places along the system, which means there are a lot of elements in the system that still need to be aware of that concern. And it's not that easy. So I'm going to throw some more uh, terminology at you. We're not going to get into this right now. I'm going to give an example that will help us understand. And then we'll go to, on, on the, to explain the uh, terminology in, in more details. So the three concepts that you need to understand is basically an advice, which is something that we want to do, a point cut, which is some place that we want the thing to be done, and an aspect which is a way to connect what we want to do with where we want to, to do it. Okay, so let's go to the example. So let's say we have a concern. I need to verify that uh, when thread access the database and does some, uh, does some operations of the database, uh, it won't collide with the other threads. So the classic solution is of course, to lock a mutex before we start working on the database and release them and release it when uh, we are done working with the database. Okay, very straightforward. Why is there the cross-cutting concern? Because there are a lot of places and a lot of people who write code for that database and they all have to do the same thing and lock using the same mutex and releasing it afterwards and someone somewhere will forget to do it. It's inevitable. And when that will happen, it will be very hard to trace and realize that that's the issue that caused the, the problem. So what's the solution that aspect-oriented programming uh, uh, suggests to us? So the ideal solution is to have two aspects. One is a, to have a cut point just before we first call the database which have an advice that says log the mutex. And if another aspect just after we finished working with the database says release the, uh, the mutex. And the idea is if we have those two aspects, then something in the system, some a com a compiler for example, will make sure that these uh, pieces of code will run at the right places automatically without the user having to explicitly say so. Of course, if that happens, then I can save a lot of problems. I don't, as a, as a programmer, need to worry whether or not I have taken the right mutex, did I forget to, to use it or to, or to release it. That's the ideal solution. A, a more reasonable uh, version of that would be that we have a cut point that is around an invocation of a function and it locks the mutex before the function is called and release the, uh, the mutex after the function is called. And if we go back to the beginning of the, the lecture when we said we have an execution around the pointer, that's exactly what it looks like. And of course, the key, as I said, the aspect should be applied automatically. It does, it, if I'm the one writing the aspect, I don't need to rely on another programmer to do anything in their code in order for the aspect to take effect. That's the key here. Okay, so let's talk about the terminology that I've 
what you a little bit in more details. So a cut point uh, is basically some place where we want to have an impact or change the behavior of the system. The sort of theory in the academic world would be that everywhere could be a cut point, whether it's uh, accessing a member, a, a setting, a, a initializing a memory, anything, any point in the, in the system is a cut point. Um, that's very nice, not very practical. It's very hard to achieve that sort of level. Most actual implications will probably limit you to an invocation of a function, in some sense, whether it's a function or a method or something. When an invocation happens, you can try and mess up with things a little bit and change the behavior a little bit. There are a couple of types. Uh, you can insert something before the, the original uh, function is called after or wrap it around the invocation of the function. And there are a lot of variations whether you allow the parameters uh, of the function and they don't have to be modified or not. So that, that's what a cut point is. An advice similarly is a piece of code that we want to be executed. And in theory, that can be anything from injecting a few lines of code at a, at a second position to completely rewriting the, the, the program at that point. Uh, when in practice, it's probably some sort of function that we wrote some other place and we're invoking the function at that point. Again, we have the same kinds of types, whether it's a wrapping function, a function that we want to be called immediately before the function, immediately after, that makes certain, uh, uh, if you think about things like copy a lesion, then invoking a function before and wrapping it might have a difference. So that, there are implications to the different types. And of course, whether or not we allow parameters and return types to be modified. Um, is of course there. And an aspect, of course, as we said, is the way to connect those two entities. It's basically some sort of regular expression for describing cut points and a reference to the advice. And it matches the advice to all the relevant cut points. And matching can be done in either runtime or compile time. Well, we, and I can say that uh, in Java, where this uh, concept is, uh, was initialized, uh, was initially uh, implemented or explored, they are very big on saying that runtime is the only way to go. Uh, in practice, that is not the case. I know there's at least one uh, academic implementation of uh, uh, aspect-oriented uh, programming in C++, but they rely on static code analysis and, com and compile time insertion of the code instead. We can talk a little bit about what the implication of that is. And the regular, regular expression that we are, we are discussing here is usually something about the types and the name of the method or function that we're invoking, but it can also include the call stack. So maybe I want to invoke uh, the piece of code only in certain situations, only if I'm being called from a certain other form of call from uh, a certain context or somebody specific is calling me. So that is also something that people are discussing. Um, so what do we need in order to have a aspect-oriented programming? So we need a way to generate cut points where they are needed. That's the first element. Uh, we need a language to describe which cut points are relevant to a given advice. And we need a mechanism to automatically uh, associate the advice with the, uh, with the cut point. And the reason I got so excited is that I think two of those three elements are the things that I've described before. So I don't think we are in, we, we don't have aspect-oriented programming yet, but I think the elements that we need in order to have aspect-oriented programming are showing up. 
whether it's executional on the pointer or whether it's the metaprogramming that allows us to do that kind of matching in compile time and allow us to really write a code that says, okay, I want uh, every time that, some, that somebody writes uh, an invocation to also verify a few things. Okay, so uh, I do want to acknowledge that there are objections to aspect-oriented programming, there are limitations, um, some of which I agree with, some, some of which not so much. Um, the main objection that people has is that it creates an obtuse code. Basically, your code does something that somebody wrote in another piece of the program and you don't know that it affects your code. Um, that is certainly true. I want to acknowledge that as absolutely true. But if there is a way or paradigm that prevents people from writing bad and obtuse code, even unintentionally, I have not met it yet. So use with caution, but I don't think that is actually uh, um, a striking point against uh, against this uh, this approach. Um, the more serious ob uh, objections that I have are first of all performance. C certainly, uh, when you're using runtime application of aspects, you're running into a big performance uh, penalty in which every time a function is called, you need to evaluate whether or not an aspect is relevant to that invocation. So that is a big, big element that you need to consider. The other big element is, as I said, we have two of the three elements. The third one, the usability, specifically the language that tells us this is the um, this is the cut point in which I want this advice to run. I don't think we've cracked that one yet, or very close, or even very close to cracking that one yet. That is a serious thing that we need to address if we want aspect-oriented programming to be really useful. Because if, for example, I need the developer to name his function in a given way, so I know that the uh, aspect should run, then again, I go back to the situation where I need the other programmer to know something or to do something for the, uh, for the aspect to run, which limits the usefulness. So uh, what's next? Um, so we don't have aspect-oriented programming uh, yet, but I do think that it invites us to think and imagine the problems that we have in a new way and search for new solution or find new uses to, uh, to, to tools that we already have and can be used in many ways. Again, I think that in programming, it's not just the, the tools, it's not just the language, it's, it's also how you think. Um, I don't know how many of you, but I've certainly uh, encountered people who come to C++ from writing C and they think they write an excellent C++ code, but they haven't realized that C++ is not just C++ with some syntactic sugar sprinkled, sprinkled on top of it. It actually needs you to think and imagine the problem and imagine the solution that you're going to do in a different way. And the last point I'm going to make is that while we don't have aspect-oriented programming yet, um, it doesn't mean that it's completely useless and completely uh, un unavailable for us if we do uh, an extra work. For example, if you are using a system that has dependency injection, then hijacking the dependency injection mechanism is a way to implement aspect-oriented programming. Instead of injecting one pointer, you inject another. Uh, if you are using macros, macros are, of course, very problematic in many ways, but they are a way to inject code into your uh, program at certain, at certain points. 
so you can inject code that way. Again, I'm very hopeful that the metaprogramming uh, paper will be in some fashion accepted and will give us better ways to achieve those goals. But, uh, but in the meantime, there are still things that we can do. So as I said, this is a very short talk. Uh, I'll be very happy if there are any questions or thoughts that you might have that and have a discussion about that 